Okay. Um, so happy CS Ed Week, everyone, and welcome to our LISP workshop. Um, so we're going to get started with some introductions. So my name is Karina, and I'm a junior studying CS um, with a concentration in software engineering and a minor in business administration here at SAMU, and I'm on the teacher support and outreach team here at CS Academy. My name is Evan. I'm a senior at CMU, and I'm majoring in trombone performance, but with a minor in computer science. And I'm also on the teacher support and outreach team on CS Academy. Hello, my name is Majid. I'm a junior and majoring in computer science with a minor in mathematics. And I am also on the teacher support and outreach team here at CS Academy. And next, we'll be moving on to the list introduction. Um, yeah, so we're going to go over some of the basics on how to make lists and like edit them and make changes to them. Um, so um, we can see in this uh, slide um, on line two, this is how an example of how we can declare a list. Um, so the color list is the name of our list. And then um, in the square brackets are all the elements that are going to go in this list. So we have three elements, um, red, orange, and yellow. Um, so these are going to be the colors that go in our list. Um, and then on line five, we try printing the first element in the list. So lists are zero indexed, which means that the first index is index zero. So when we print color list at index zero, this is going to print out red if we actually ran this code. Um, and then next on line eight, we're going to change an element in the list. So what we do is we assign the element at index zero to be the color pink. So now the list is going to be pink, orange, red because, or pink, orange, yellow, because the red color has now been replaced by the element pink. Um, and then finally, on line 12, this is an example of how we can add another color to a list using the append method. So instead of replacing another color already in the list, we can just add a new color onto the very end. So now our list is going to look like pink, orange, yellow, and green. All right. So yeah, with that, uh, let's talk about some more specific tips regarding lists. So the first tip is about using list methods and some of the methods that exist. Uh, you already just saw one, which is append which uh, adds a value to the end of the list. We can also use pop to remove the last value from a list or remove the specific value from a list. For example, if you do dot pop and pass a zero into pop, it'll remove the first value from the list. But if you call pop without any arguments, it'll just default to removing the last value. We can also use uh, dot remove to search through the list and remove a specific value. So you might, if you have like a list of strings and maybe you wanna remove the word hello, uh, so then you just call dot remove hello and then that'll search through the list and remove uh, any instances of hello. Um, and so, yeah, with these three functions, we can modify lists in a bunch of ways. And uh, that has a number of applications to the kinds of programs that we can build. So for example, um, in, we have a video of this little program that I built uh, called Bouncy Balls, uh, which kind of illustrates some of the methods. So whenever we click the add ball button, in the in the window, then we'll add on another bouncy ball using dot append. So you'll be able to see in the code, uh, we add an instance of a ball into the balls list on line eight. And then when we click remove ball, we call the dot pop method to uh, remove the ball from our list. So yeah, that's just one small example of one of the many ways that these list methods can work. Okay, um, so our next tip is going to deal with using randomness in our lists. Um, so we can use the rend or the, the choice method in order to randomly select any element from a list. Um, so this function will take in a list as um, the uh, parameter, and then it will turn a random element from the list. Uh, so for example, if we had a shape and we wanted to randomly choose a color to make this uh, the fill of this shape, then we would use the choice um, function to um, randomly select a color to fill the shape. Um, and if we only wanted to choose a color once, then we can use the remove method to remove the color from the list once we've already used it. Um, but we have to be careful for removing um, elements from a list because the choice method, the choice function will throw an error if it's called an empty list. So we have to check that the list is not empty uh, before we call the choice method or choice function on it. Um, so this next here is an example of how we can use the randomness um, with our lists. Um, so here we at the top, we define this list called colors um, and it contains all the colors in a rainbow and then we make it the background color sky blue and then we have the starting radius is going to be 150. Um, so then while our colors uh, list is not empty we're going to randomly choose a color from this list and then we'll remove it from the list and then we'll make a circle with the current radius and then set the color to be or the set the fill to be the color we chose and then decrease the radius by 25. Um, so as you can see this as we randomly choose colors from this list um, 
we're building a rainbow, but not in like the stereotypical rainbow order. We're just choosing colors at random, but each color is only chosen once. Um, and then once we choose all the colors, the while loop ends um, and we have this uh, rainbow drawing drawn. And then we draw the um, the uh, green square on the bottom to cover up the bottom half of the circle so that it actually looks like half of a rainbow. All right, moving on, we're gonna be focusing on 2D lists for our next tip. So one thing we can do is that we can convert tables with rows and columns into two-dimensional lists uh, that we can use in various ways uh, and various applications. So often they're called 2D lists. And in the example here, um, we have a table with three columns and two rows. We can see that we can represent the same table, but in list form um, with our example list L. And essentially to use the values in a 2D list, we need to use two indexes. And if you can recall, um, when we have a list and we wanna sort of use a value, we actually only needed to use one index in the past for a 1D list or a one dimensional list, which is you know the examples we've been looking at so far. But now um, with, two indexes, we have the power of uh, taking the value of the row and the column to represent um, the value in a 2D list. So in the example here, we have L of one and two. And what this essentially is saying is that L12 is the value in the row one. So if we look at the first row um, and we can see that in the second column, we actually have uh, the value present, uh, present at the column and the row. So that corresponds to eight. And also remember that when we're dealing with 2D lists, we always start with index zero. So when I say row one, essentially I'm implying the second row and co column two implies uh, the third row. So if we can look at the second column, third row, we can see that on our table, we have the value eight, as opposed to having um, no index, uh, which is not how we sort of use our list. And what we can do is actually use our CM CMU graphics function make list to create a 2D list as well. And make list is really useful for like when we need to create a 2D list first and then loop over the list. And it's sort of used for initializing instead of just creating our list um, like we normally do. And a little more about 2D lists is 2D lists is that we can loop over them uh, very conveniently using nested for loops. And what essentially uh, this allows us to do is that we can one by one inspect all the elements in our list. And in the example as shown here, um, state takes in each of the following values in the 2D list app.states. And from our code, we can see that we have a nested for loop, two for loops, one for our a column and one for our row. And first we start by um, iterating over the range of two, so zero and one for row. And for call, we look through zero, one, and two. And uh, this is denoted by our upper limit of our for loop. And um, essentially we're setting state to equal app.states and we're, pay we're pretty much just changing the value uh, present there. And more useful practice for this is present in CS1, especially for exercises uh, shown in 11.1.3 and 11.2. Moving on to our workshop example. Um, this is a pretty neat um, multiple choice question here, just to sort of uh, solidify understanding of creating and modifying 2D lists. Um, essentially, we can take a look at the table present here and I've illustrated the column indexes uh, for our table, and having a looking, having a look at uh, examples A, B, C, and D, we can sort of inspect and see which one corresponds to the table as shown. Example uh, A is not necessarily fitting our dimensions for our table. We have uh, two rows present: row zero and row one. Um, namely 743 and 918 elements, which doesn't uh, match our table exactly. And with option B, we can see that we actually only have a one-dimensional list present here, 
uh, with elements one and zero present, which doesn't, again, uh, represent our table, uh, because if you recall, our table does need to fit our two-dimensional case uh, of our list here. And option C and D look a lot more like our uh, example here on the table. But if we look at ex option C, we can see that um, our row zero doesn't exactly match uh, the row zero present in our table. Row zero is seven, four in our option C example, but is nine, three in our table. So we can automatically eliminate C and also upon further inspection, we can see that row three um, is also incorrect, which is by visualization, the fourth row, uh, three, nine in our option C, uh, which doesn't match seven, four in our table. And finally, option D is pretty much exactly uh, our table. Uh, we have option um, option D denoting the row zero of nine, three and all the other rows um, matching our rows in our table. And similarly, our columns are exactly as shown below in option D. And finally, 2D lists are really helpful when coding board games as we can represent uh, the board using a 2D list. And you can get a lot more examples uh, of you know looking at board games and board-like structures uh, when using 2D lists in our CS1 modules. Um, okay, um, so just to kind of sum up all the tips we've covered, um, we first learned how to use um, different list methods, including, including append, pop, and remove. Um, and then next we learned how to use the choice methods so that we could use randomness with our lists. And then finally, we learned how to create and use 2D lists. Um, so thank you so much for watching and happy CSED week.